first of all, let's create a skeleton. So just explaining the color code here. So the yellowish fields here, these ones and these ones, uh, are the fields where we'll be inputting data. Uh, the one in blue, that uh, are the fields where we will have some formula in them. So first you need to create a set of six cells here. Would start it. And here, for instance, you would have the start date where you went. When do you want to start this? So I'll just put 15 of October, put something in the past. And uh, this will be calculated. It's in blue and this will be calculated. So actually I can input the formula straight away. So this is today. So this is the Excel function today that will tell us the day of today. <laughs> and actually what I'm a bit, I just wanted to do something here. I'm just gonna put uh, this, but I will be putting a different format. I will be putting the format number. I will be putting a DDD format. So this way you'll know which day we are talking about. So here I can do a little bit of formatting. Now we need to create a grid that could hold around eight weeks. Uh, you can do it as, as big as you want, but just for this training, I'm just gonna to stick to eight weeks. So which means uh, 56 cells. So to start with, uh, you can try and make them a, a little bit small, but uh, at the beginning we'll have them a little bit bigger so we can understand what we are doing because working on small cells is not uh, very obvious. So while we're at it, I mean, let's just select all those cells. So you've created 56 wide and you have 10 high. So you just select all these and then you put a background. So what I put here is I put the, the, the yellow background this way, the, the gold accent for. So that a very pale background. And if you select all this again, you just select the border. So you go into more borders. And what you want is uh, choose the white color. So you go select white and you take a, a thin border and you just click on outline and inside and then you press OK, everything has been done already so you have the white borders there. Here, those fields will be representing a percentage. So, so you can either put it in percent or as a number. I'll just, I just prefer to put it in number. So here we go all the way from 0, 1, which is 10% to 1, which is 100%. So what I do, what you would do is you could go either way, but um, you start from one and you deduct 0 0.1. So that means you deduct 10% for each and you drag that down. If you have made your calculation run, that should take you all the way down to 10%. So this will be used to build our stacked colon here, our boxes here. So here we have, uh, we want to have a very, very thin cell here so you create a, a, a cell you leave it blank here but uh, very uh, towards the end you you you'll see it's better if we put it very very thin but for the moment i can leave it this way and here what we want to have is a group of seven cells so to start with you wouldn't have this what i've done already is i've merged them so if you don't know how to do this you just select the seven cells and you press and merge and center, which is <laughs> very simple. And, and then you do that all the way. We select here the start date. So here I'm just gonna put equal to the start date here. This is when we are starting to track. And you need to format it, you do format cells. And as a format cell number, you would just select DD. So that will only show you the day itself. And then you add one to it plus one, and then you drag it all the way down. So after the 31st, it goes to one because this is obviously a date. There is a date behind this. We don't see it, but there is a date here. So here in this uh, merge cells that you have now, the only thing you need to do is you refer to the first date and you put a different format. Here I've already formatted it, but what you need to do is you go in format cell customs and you put triple M dash YY. So this way that will give you an idea of what months it is. So here I do the same for each cell. I just refer to the first field or what you can do once you've done it all is you just copy and paste several times. So as we have done for, for this field here, uh, you can do the same for the start date here. You can put that somewhere. For instance, here I'm just gonna put the 
equal to this. And then I right click for my cells. And if I put several Ds, actually if I put four Ds, that's gonna give me the full, the full day. So here I just can copy the format and put the same here. So this way, if you wanna start here on the Sunday, say you know that you have to uh, change this to 15th of October if you wanna start on Sunday. I know in the States it's uh, start the week on uh, Sunday, I think, and in Australia it's on Monday, and I'm not sure about the other parts of the world. So we've done that, we've done that. Uh, there is a strength symbol here, but we'll uh, have a look at this later on. Now we need to decide how many habits we want to track. So here, for instance, you can have around 20 here, but it's completely up to you. And you have still have the, the 56 because we want to have eight weeks. So we, we have a grid here. What I do is I just select a very pale green at the, at the very right here. So if you don't like the color, that's fine. We, we can change all this to later on. Uh, but for this one, I need a black border. So I just go black border here again, and I choose color automatic black, and I click on those two, and it gives me the same. Here the same, I just put uh, the text, habit description, and then I create a field here for the for where I will put uh, my habits. So habit one. So at the bottom here, we just add two rows this way and we put them in blue. So this is where we will be doing some calculation. So here we put some options. This will tell us the level at which uh, we want our stacked column to change colors. So here I've put them in yellow, meaning that they can be changed, but I suggest you just uh, leave them uh, this way. So I have level one and you input 33%, level two and uh, you input 66%. So this is hard coded. So if you can create those six cells, I think will be right. I think this is all that is required. We talked about all this. So now we have this ready for action. So first of all, what I want to do here, I want to keep track of the total of the habits. So I'll be using a, a, f a function called count A, which is which we'll be using actually in a couple of instances. So that tells me how many non-blank fields there is in an array. So if I just select all this, this will tell, tell me how many non-blank fields. I like it because it's straightforward and there is no complex formula to calculate it. I just use a count A and this is telling me here. So now let me go, I'm gonna be inputting more habits so it makes a little bit more sense as we progress. There you go, so I've added more habits. The total habits tracked is 14. Okay, so what do I do with this now? Uh, what I would like to do is, I don't want to have to input any, any number or anything. I just want, as soon as I change the value of this, I want it to turn to a deeper green. I'll select everything here that's one way to do it you select everything and what you do is you go under conditional formatting new rule and contain only things that contain you put no blanks so if it's not a blank you put this deeper green here deeper accent so now regardless of what you put this is showing as a as a deep green. So this is done. So now there is a couple of things I would like to do. I would like at the bottom here, I mentioned those, but I didn't really do much with, with those is, I will be counting how many habits there is for, for that day. Okay, so I'm doing a count A now. So if there is no blank, it is. If there's nothing, or if there's a blank, then I will count what, how many we have done for that day. And then you drag that all the way across. And now I want to calculate the percentage. This is what the start columns will, will be using. So here, for instance, 11. I've done 11 out of how many? Out of 14. So that gives me 0 0.8, which is 80%. Now, if I put it on percentage, 79%. Now, before I copy that across, I need to lock the C3. So it just refers always to the to this field here, I just need to press F4 on the C3, so it puts all the dollars. So that's it. So now you can drag it across. And uh, voila, so we have all the, the percentage now. So let's see if it works. Uh, the one after, if I just put F, 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 
f yes so it's uh, it's still calculating the percentage which is good which is what we wanted so let's just start with highlighting today's date actually uh, if i take all this this time i include the day if i take all this and what i want to check is i want to check the first the first field i want to check this one so conditional formatting i just say new rule and I use a formula this time. So, so what I want is I want to check this field here. I want to unlock the F, uh, log the 19. And what do I want to do with this? I want to check that it is equal to, if, if it's equal to this day here, which is equal to, to today, I want to give it a special formatting. I want to give it this format here. So this one is completely locked. Today, the field will not change. And here the, the F will progress, but the 19 will not progress because we want to stay on that line here. So let's see if it works. So it works, but that's a little bit far. Okay, so this is done. So what I would like to, now we need to check what happens when we input some. So when I input some, it, uh, it doesn't change color. So that's because we need to review the order of the checking. So we want it to, have, to happen behind. So if I go under conditional formatting, manage rule, I need to change the order. And to be safe, I say stop if it's true here. I don't want the two colors, I just want this one. Now, okay, let's do some conditional formatting on that, uh, for those uh, cube, for the stacked columns at the top here. Now, if you click on the top left column, let's do it dif differently. You could either select everything or you could select just this one and after copy the formatting. So here I've created one rule here. So there are two conditions. First, I check if the percentage completed that is here is um, greater or equal to the one that is here. This is highest level. And then at the same time, if I am above uh, the second level here, I know that I need to get the deeper green. So I duplicate this rule, actually twice. The second, duplicating the rules, but this time I will be checking if it's above the level one. So here I will put instead 45. For this one, I'm doing the same. But this time, I don't want to check if it's above this. I want to check that it's under it. So strictly under it. This one here. And I want a light green, very light green. I'll confirm for the greens. Okay, so now I, I apply all this. Now if I copy this uh, format painter and I copy it across, across the board, Now it's working, but it's a little bit too pale. So what I do is I just select everything again. Conditional formatting and the bottom one. I'm just going to take the second one. So this one I'm going to take instead the this one here. And the third one should be okay. Now something to note, as I say, it's not, you can have one habit here and this still doesn't start. That's because we're talking about percentage here. So that means that he hasn't reached, uh, I have 10 levels, so he would only show here if I meet the 10%. So here one out of uh, 14, it's not 10%. Two out of 14, it's 10%. So this is showing the 10% here. So I left those big because I wanted, to, I wanted to, uh, to be able to show you, but we will make them smaller. Uh, something else that I've added here, just uh, you just uh, if you want, just to when you reach 100 percent, you you input this formula here. If the field here, if for F42 is equal to one, which is 100 percent, then you put the letter A. If not, you leave it blank, and then we put the font web dings. The web dings fonts give you a tick, so you can even take it, sort of, and you make sure you you drag this along. Okay, so this is done. What happens if I have another one here? 
Okay, now I can do some formatting. I wanted to have the, those smaller. So if you want to hide hide something, so here I'm just saying that uh, this row here, you can hide it. You can put it very small, so there's a bit of a separation between the two. Uh, you can hide things, you just click on the colon and you just put data group, and then that will group them, and then you can just hide them this way. This two, I think is not very nice, so you do the same. You just click this, select those two, you put data and group, and after you can hide them. Uh, then we are left with putting a, a, a title. So the title, I'm just going to try and use the Microsoft Power uh, to uh, to do it. So let's have a look. I want to select the shape first. I like rounded corners. I just put it here. I just thought that this uh, color here, orangey, would go well with the the one that we have. Taking the orangey, keeping the same um, uh, method as this. And here I just I was trying to actually put uh, the one of the preset word out of word that usually they are pretty bad, but I think I th this worked in a <laughs> in a strange way. So Ben's habit tracker, for instance, here. Just select it, make it big. So the font I use is the Benchcrift semicolon here. So I've, I just have my my font that I'm use, used to, the Benchcrift font. I hope you enjoy this. I'm doing different habit tracker because I know that there are uh, a lot of different uh, tests here. So you can vary it as much as you like. Here, for instance, if you don't like the yellow, I think uh, it could work with some, some light gray uh, this way. Uh, as always, you know, you go under page layout and you select color here and you go down this list here and you see how it changes. 